Thank you for coming out and supporting Faster Together. Um, and thanks for coming to NAB. So real quick, we're talking about Blackmagic Design's Fusion. And as you know, it's a motion graphics and visual effects compositing software. Um, but today we're gonna talk about uh, a node stacking. And so what, what do I mean by node stacking? It's really, uh, well, it's like a thousand different things, but I can only tell you 500. Um, it's the idea of taking like some multi-pass compositing, if you're coming from that world, and merging it with duplicating or smart cloning. Um, but the base idea, the, the real draw that I want you guys to understand is not just to do the standard base thing, like for example, just adding a glow, right? Add multiple, stack up your effects, right? Node stack your effects to get more of an organic um, or just help to get a deeper look. So we're gonna start off real simple now that I've definitely confused you guys. Let's add a text node, right? So one thing I do wanna mention is, you know, I, I added a, a 2D text node and the word stacked is in there. And that's not how it is in Fusion, you, it's, it's blank. So any tool that you have uh, in Fusion, if you find yourself just adapting or, or having to constantly change parameters before you even use it, you can just right click and make that the new default. So that's just something that just kind of helps time save. So if a background nodes or anything, anything at all, you can just change it and that's the new default for you. So just a little quick uh, helpful tip. So we're gonna add that glow. And let me go back and change the, the color here real quick. All right, so we've got our glow. And so let's just, with the idea of just dialing this back and adding and stacking and adding and, and just kind of layering on top of each other, we're gonna add a blur node. So uh, a blur node is not typically, you know, you don't really wanna blur your text out where you can't see it, but in Fusion, every node has a, a blend parameter. So you can just take this blend and knock back your effect. And that works for transforms, color corrections. So it's just a nice way of you know, building a strong look and then just bringing it back, feathering it back with the blend node. So you know, take a look at that stuff and try to explore with it. And next, we're gonna add a filter. So if you're familiar with After Effects, you're familiar with doing um, Pre-comps, I know it's constantly pre-comping all the time in After Effects. So we're gonna basically do the equivalent of a pre-comp just by taking the output of our filter and dropping it back on top of our blur. And so there you go, we've just done a pre-comp. And as you can see with nodes, it's, it's so visual. You, know, you don't have to like jump deep, deep into a couple, several different pre-comps, it's just right there. You can see what you've done, you can see what you've added uh, and how it's affecting. So we're gonna add another soft glow. I know, how many glows am I gonna add? So let's just bring this down, take the glow size down. Just to kind of tweak it in. And then let's add one more glow because I just can't stop myself. And we'll just pump up this glow size and bring the glow down. All right, so there we go. We're starting to develop a look by just stacking our nodes, right? Building up organically, adding, and you can change this a thousand different ways. So it doesn't have to necessarily come out this way. But let's look at what we would have done if we would have just done a standard glow by itself. So let me load this into the second viewer here. We can just kind of A, B in this. So this is another thing that you can do inside of Fusion, just kind of A-B um, your effects and kind of compare nodes and see how you know, one works from the other. Um, but you can see the standard node, that's fine, and that may work for what you're doing, but you can also you know, do things nice and, and uh, organically just by stacking up your nodes. So I'm gonna delete that. Go back to A. And as well, you can package this up with just a group node right away. You can jump right into a group node. So now it's nice and neat and it's compact. Let me ungroup that just so you can see it. Okay, so we've done our first quote unquote stack, if you will, right? Now comes the part of duplicating. So let me copy our text node. And instead of just your standard you know, pasting, I'm gonna do shift command V paste. So right away you can see that there's this green line that's connecting the two nodes together. So what is that? In Fusion, that's basically what, they call, what they're calling an instance. And what is an instance? Well, it's a way of duplicating, but like a smart duplication or a clone or smart cloning. Um, but there's like a bi-directional communication to where you do one change in one and it affects the other. So you can have, I can have 10 instances of the same node 
and anywhere in my flow, my pipeline, if I make one change to that, it affects all those nodes. It's a very, very powerful way of working, and it's not just for text, it's for any node, so transform. So you can have multiple transform nodes spread throughout your flow, all doing the same animation connected by one set of keyframes. You know, so it's, that's an interesting, powerful way of working. So I'm just gonna show that real quick. Let me go to the shading tab here, and you'll see, so on my right side, I have uh, my instance of my text. On the left is the, the, uh, the original text with all the glows. But if I change the color, it affects them both. So any change, any parameter you do, it just ripples throughout everything, right? So let's go and undo that. But the next step into that, the next step what you can do is you can actually go in and make certain parameters independent as needed. So in this case, we're gonna de-instance, sorry, this mouse is a little funky. De-instance our color group. So now I'm gonna go and change the color. So there we go. So I still have all the same parameters controlled uh, um, throughout both of the nodes, but now I've just made independent the color, right? So to prove that, let's go ahead and change the text. So I'm changing the text in the instance. You can see all these little green lines around everything. Let's change it to faster together. So there we go. Let's go ahead and copy our, all of our effects. And we'll do the same thing. We'll instance paste those guys. And it's the same procedure for these nodes. Is if I make a change to one of the soft glows, it's gonna affect the other soft glow. So I can mimic and build and stack different versions very, very quickly. Um, and then when I need to, step in and de-instance or make independent those parameters that you want. All right, so let's just add a transform node to this pink one. And we're going to just increase the size a little bit. And then let's comp this. So could you imagine also pre-comping this as well? It's just very visual right here. You can see what you're doing and how you're doing it. And let's change this to N. And then let's just add a mask. Invert that. So you can start to develop interesting looks. Let's see here. This is but you can start, you can see, start animating the mask, right? Animate the mask with uh, some fast noise and start to develop some nice organic fluid transitions from one side to the other, all the same text. If you need to change that text, you just go back to one of those nodes, change it and it ripples throughout them all, right? So nice little powerful way of working in 2D. And this also works the same for 3D as well. Yes, it works in 3D. Um, all right, so let's quickly add a camera. So I've just, I had the text note selected. I added a camera, it automatically gave me a merge 3D. And let's add a render node. I'm gonna view that in the second one. We're not seeing anything yet because I need to add some lights. So let me find my lights. And this is the bin. If you guys are not familiar with Fusion, it has a, uh, a bin where you can store any presets that you build, right? Any little special modules that you build you can just store them in the bin and use them anywhere, however you want. You can put them in a text file, email them to somebody else, and now they can use those bins as well. But it also comes with a bunch of shaders, uh, looks, and just things and how to, to deconstruct um, other operations in Fusion. So it'll kind of help you jump in. All right, so let's plug in these lights. And you'll also notice that our camera is right there in the middle, right? Ground zero. So I'm just going to kind of find a look that I like. And I'm gonna right click in my perspective, X, Y, Z, say copy this view to the camera, and there it is, right? So this is kind of an interesting way of, of even just animating a camera. I'll kind of like, I can frame up better for some reason in my, in my perspective view and just say copy that. And if you have keyframes attached to it, it'll just make new keyframes. So you can just kind of build flow and fly in a very visual way. Um, and if you need to, you can go nitty gritty and work on the, uh, the X, Y, Z panel. Um, you know, right over here. But this is a great way of just roughing in some, some movement. So this is standard 3D text, right? Nothing to write home about. Um, but this is a good, a good start, a good approach. So let's go ahead and copy, let me see if I can go over here, all those little glows and, and whatnot. Let's just paste that in. And let's connect that. Now let's look at that in here. And so we've done something in 2D, now just dumping it on top of our uh, 3D render, and it's, it, needs, it needs some tweaking. We can come back in here and use our blend modes and just kind of blend things back again. So that way they're not too, too strong. Bring down some of the glows. Let's bring down some of this. 
And let's bring down this one as well. All right, so this is a, a decent look. And you can change it, again, a thousand different ways, um, not just this way. But that same approach of, of copying and pasting our text, making another instance, right? Let's copy our merge. Let's paste it, and you'll see what we're going to do. Let's add an overwrite. And let's connect that in. Very good. Now, so we basically just created a, a new 3D scene. I'm just going to change the color of this. And let me show you what we're doing here. Let me change our color. So I've basically just duplicated and created another 3D scene, right? That's parallel to what I've already created. Now, all I'm going to do is share the same camera and lights into this 3D scene. I don't have to duplicate the lights. I don't have to you know, duplicate the camera. So it's a very easy way of making multiple 3D scenes and using the same camera, using the same set of lights. So if you have keyframes attached to that, it's all just build once, share as many times as you need. And so now we've got two different views. We've got this view, and we've got our original. So let me go in and de-instance uh, some of these parameters, like the bevel depth. I'm going to turn that off, make that independent. There we go for the width and the extrusion depth. I'm going to de-instance. I'm going to turn down our width and our bevel, and then I'm just going to increase the, uh, the bevel depth a little bit. All right, so now what, what do we do all this for? Well, now we can take the, the output render of, of our face, which is this, drop it on top of our original render, so now we've got a face in 3D, right? So by the, taking that multi-pass compositing approach, you can start to build different 3D text and build different 3D options, right? You can add glows on top of that and add other correct, color corrections on top of that uh, and really go crazy. Now, let's do some simple, real quick text animation. We can go to the follower. The follower is just uh, a sequential uh, text animator engine, right? Very simple how to use. Let's uh, go to our bot frame five and let's put our, our delay to around. There we go. And our shading. Let's set a keyframe for our opacity and a keyframe for our Z space. And let's go back to frame zero and we'll put our pivot at six and our opacity at zero. Let that cache. So by animating your rectangle here, you can start to really reveal or, or, or distort your text and reveal it underneath. Uh, so now back to the 3D, we can do the same thing. We can take our 3D, and we can connect to the, that animation that we did. So now they, now they both follow. And you want to add motion blur, and you want to add you know, more on top of that. So just nice ways of, of you know, stacking your nodes, building your nodes, and coming up with interesting looks, not just the basic standard glow or basic standard 3D. Really get in there and add on top of itself um, simple pre-comping you know, just by reconnecting over itself. So just to show you that you can take this a step further, there's other ways, there's other looks that you can develop, you know, flat looks, cartoon looks. And it's the same approach, right? Um, this one is using. So, you know, taking ambient occlusion and warping it and adding different effects to it to really get the look that you want. And then just stacking it on top of each other, right? Just rebuilding it on top of each other until you get that. And then another one is, it's really endless. But this as well, so you know, taking something that looks like glass and adding other lines on top of it. So it's really endless in how you can develop. You know, start adding shaders to your 3D text, and then you can you know make um, materials that are animating on top of your 3D text as well. So, and then lastly, here's one that I did with retro text. So did some animation on this text. The same thing, just reinstance it. Did a different version of the, uh, of its layout. Now we're going to composite that and add some distortion. 
just with some displace, right? Just some displace and some fast noise. And then adding the outline. And adding some more distortion and just comping it over itself. Over itself. So right here, this is the same thing as a pre-comp. And then adding a background. So there's a lot of different looks and styles that you can create from that approach. So it doesn't just apply to 3D text nodes, but to everything else as well. Um, and real quick, if you haven't heard that Zolve 15 now has Fusion inside. So you can take all this same animation and VFX that you're doing standalone, and you can now bring it right inside of DaVinci Resolve. I cut a little thing, a little promo, just to see, can this work? Does it work? How quick and easy is it? And it does work very, very nice. Here you go, right inside of Resolve Fusion. Edit page and Fusion page. I don't know if you realize, I just did a click from the edit page to the Fusion page. But if you really think about it, it's the equivalent of in your editor, exporting whatever you need to export, waiting for that export, closing down the application, opening up After Effects, importing your footage, organizing, designing, render, close, import back into your editor. One click over, that fast. No more, none of that, it's all gone. You're right inside of a fusion. Um, so real quick, just to show you that yes, it works. I took their logo and then I put into it a texture. I also made a, oops, this is very sticky, this surface. Made a bump mat out of it, put into a shader, onto an image plane, and then added some lights. Just animated some lights. Oh, I need to turn the 3D lights on. So you can see on the right side, you know, now it's got a little bit of a glint, right? Just a little hint of a glint. It's animating. And then it converts right into its full screen, the regular logo. So it's extremely powerful now. There's no excuse. You can go straight from editorial, jump right into Fusion, do your animation, do your visual effects, and back into, uh, back into Resolve for editorial literally with a click of a button. So if you guys haven't downloaded it, go check it out. It is available now uh, as a public beta. Uh, that's my presentation. Hope you guys learned something. And let me know if you guys are jumping into Fusion. I'd love to hear your conversations. So thanks.